Hi everyone, welcome back to Grandpa Mark's Hobbies and a build update number two of AMT's 1970 Ford Galaxy police car. It's a 007 car. Um, diamonds are forever, I think it was, if I'm not mistaken. But anyhow, that was blue, and this is a black and white. So let's jump in here. Uh, Terry stopped over, she heard that it was out of paint, which is only about 15 minutes ago. So she wanted to check everything out and just see how it's all going. And I think she's happy now with, with it not being black and blue. <laughs> so this came out really good. I'm happy with it. Um, once again, gloss white is never covered the way I wanted it to, but it did really good here. Um, and I had a few people ask me, why did I paint the black first? and then the white, and it's just easier for me to do it that way. Uh, I know I could have sprayed the whole dang thing white and then masked off all the white and then painted the black. But what I like to do is I like to get that black down because I can always get a really good gloss coat of black down and then just tape out the door and it's an easy wrap around the back, do this door come around the front, knock that out with tape, and then bag everything else. And then what I do is I'll paint a good coat of flat aluminum on everything. And then that covers the black in one coat, pretty much. I can cover the black, uh, one good coat. Usually I'll do a mist coat first just to set the, the uh, tape, and then I'll do a, a decent coat over top of that, and that'll cover everything. And then I come back and I paint everything in flat white. And what that does is that gives me a good even white coat on there where I don't have the zebra stripes and, and the wavy gloss coat and all that. Uh, it just, it works out really good for me. And then two coats of gloss white dropped right over top of that. And I'm really happy with this. It came out good. It's not as glossy gloss as I wanted it to be, but a good rub down and then a shot of quick shine over the whole car will even everything out. And I think it's going to look great. Oh, well, I know it's going to look great. It's going to look better than, than anything I've ever done with, uh, with white paint before. I'll tell you that right now. And I use the uh, Mobius uh, from Gallery, the 0.3 millimeter Mobius airbrush to do it and just because I wanted to see, you know, wanted to just do a big surface with it, figuring worst case scenario, I can sand it down and hit it with that, the big old swallow table on the number seven. But that three millimeter covered it even. I mean, very, very even. I see no stripes. I see no nothing. The only thing I see is that I didn't mix the paint thin enough and that's my own fault. I kind of thought it was a little thick, but I thought, no, oh, it's, it's okay. It'll be good. And I didn't get that where it just lays down flat. So that's my fault. I got nobody else to blame for that. I can sand that out uh, with some wet sanding and then polish it. And we'll bring that back up with the clear, like I said. But I am just, I'm really happy with this. So let's get this out of the way. And we'll go next with the interior, which I had a whole lot of fun with it. Check this out. And I'm going to come in a little bit here. We got room to. I'll come in, try to keep you in the, in the picture. I did all of this with dark yellow first. And then uh, here's a picture of that. And that covered really, really well, and I liked that that tar the tan in here uh, over the black because it'll just show up. But then what I did is I took my panel liner, and it's just my black panel liner, and I wish I had brown, but it's on order now. But I used the black on here, and I I took one seat at a time, and I pretty much painted half of it painted half of it with the panel liner, covered everything, and then came back with a Q-tip and I wiped it all off going the direction of the grain, of the flow of the seat. And then I did the bottom, then I did the top, 
and then I do the back one, the bottom, and then the top. And I even did up on top here, and you can see I did the top on the uh, dashboard too. And I'll tell you what, I am super happy with that. It brought up the detail. Uh, good detail in the seats. Crappy detail in the doors in this kit. But you know what? The doors are not going to be seen, I guess. Um, I just like painting the door, <laughs> door trim and all that. My dashboard came out really good. I'll show it to you here. It came out very good. Here's a picture of the dash, the gun, and everything right here. And the dash, I decided I'm going to paint it. It did come with decals um, with the black and the wood tan or the wood grain. But I just, it's going to be buried in there. And it had a semi-good detail on it. So I just tried to paint it, just up my skills a little bit. The gun came out great. I mean, that's a Mossberg shotgun, and it looks the part. Uh, I did add the, yeah, I did add the fire extinguisher to it. Um, because if you look at the way my radio is set up here, um, it's not the way it's supposed to be in the directions, for sure. And God help anybody that, that tries to do it the way the directions say, because... What it is, and I'm going to try to bring something where I can point, so you can see. Uh, I broke my finger. I got to I got to glue it back together again. But this radio is supposed to be on the bottom and angled up. This radio is supposed to be under this one, and then the speaker on top. Well, if you put the big radio second and the first radio first, or the second radio first, the dashboard hits it. And I mean, just there's nothing you can do. To, you can move it around. You can do whatever you want. It's going to hit it. So I decided just to flip-flop them, pull everything forward right up onto the seat. I brought the uh, other radio up kind of far just so I could clear this part right here on the dash. Uh, added the speaker. The dash wasn't attached yet. So I did all this while I was fitting the dash back and forth to make sure it fit. And then I drilled a hole in the side of the top radio and I cut my mic off. I cut the mic clean off of there. And, oh, Jake's upset about something. And I made the uh, mic wire. I didn't like where the mic was going at all. So I made the mic wire using a really tiny drill bit and my AWG 32 magnet wire. And I just wrapped and wrapped and wrapped and wrapped until I had enough. Um, drilled a hole in the bottom of the mic and then drilled a hole in the side of this. Glued it to the mic first and then just started wiggle worming that thing around until it looks like it's supposed to look. And I'm really, really happy with that. Um, I added the little red light on the mic so you know when you're keyed up. <laughs> and I also added the, the red modulation mic or light on the bottom one. These, I instead of painting them tan, since this was tan, I went with uh, semi-gloss black and titanium silver on the inside. Just offset tan and tan so you can see what, what's in there. The Mossberg came out really good. I used semi-gloss black for the barrel and uh, the breech. And then I used um, NATO brown for the uh, wood parts. And just solid painted them NATO brown. Came back after that. Hit that with the uh, clear orange and boom, it looks perfect. Um, came back onto the, the uh, metal parts of it. And I used... What else would you use? Gunmetal. <laughs> and uh, I used one of these new pointy Q-tips. If I can get one out. The new Q pointy Q-tip and just rolled it in there and wiped it down on the barrel and onto the, the breech and everything. And it looked really good. It, it made a difference. Um, I took the time to put in the uh, silver where the where you load the shells and 
the chrome piece, completely hit it. <laughs> but again, it's one of those things that I know it's there, so it just doesn't matter. Um, there's the interior, ready to rock and roll. Let me bring the chassis out now. I'm going to back you up a little bit. There we go. Um, the chassis, if you remember, I painted the whole chassis flat black. Whack. Um, came in the other day, well, like three or four days ago now, since I've been down here, and I painted all of the framework in quick shine. Just one coat of quick shine on there. Gave that that semi-gloss look, just like it should. Um, then I let all that dry. I came in. I painted this just today, the um, gas tank with flat aluminum. And you can see I got to come back because I overshot right here. And I'll take the flat black and I'll run it across that. And you'll never be the wiser. Um, I added the curbside engine compartment to this. I painted this. This is um, sky blue. You'd never know it, but that is sky blue. The uh, I'm thinking this is either the all, uh, power steering or the air conditioner pump. I painted that just flat aluminum. I kind of detailed a little bit with the starter, added a Fram oil filter, the transmission. I did use a little panel liner, but you can't really tell. Uh, and the exhaust. Now, the exhaust I'm not done with because I do want to rust it out. Um, along with this part of the exhaust. So, nothing worked out the way I kind of wanted it to, believe it or not. I'm going to have to trim things up to bring my differential, or my drive shaft, up underneath. Because it sure is too short. So, not sure what I'm going to do there. What I might do is take the engine transmission and cut just the wedge off and put it up in there. And then this transmission, because it's, it's not made, this piece isn't made to go into here, obviously, because the drive shaft's just hanging out. But it'll work out. Um, and again, I still got to, I still got to weather my, my exhaust. I tried something when I was painting the, um, the body actually, or the, uh, the semi-gloss on this, I here and there and around and, and about painted semi-gloss on the, on the mufflers, on some of the pipes and things like that, thinking that when I put the flat aluminum on there, I'll get a little variation of colors and it did not work. <laughs> It's just, that flat aluminum just covers uh, like bare paint and primer. It does a great job. Uh, I just drilled these out a little bit ago. I have to paint the blacks in here. And we'll see what we, we're going to do. The biggest thing is I got to figure out what I'm doing with the training. Because this all fits into place. But that drive shaft is just hanging out there. So I'm going to have to put a little... I'll cut a piece of that little old transmission off and shove it in the hole. Nobody will be the wiser. But the reason why I'm going curbside is because I want to light the dome light. I was going to light the tail lights, the headlights, the dome light, and actually try to make it to where my headlights wigwag back and forth and along with the tail lights. But I'm using a little Arduino Nano, which, how about if I turn it around? A little Arduino Nano, which has more than enough. I'll open it up and show you. It has more than enough outputs on it to, uh, to do what I wanted to do. The problem is the fit. The, I can fit this in the back, I can fit it in the front, whatever. But in order to drive all those LEDs, I need... Well, I was planning on using a 9-volt battery. While well, a 9-volt battery sure as heck doesn't fit, but an A24 battery, which is 12 volts, will fit in here. 
So I think I'll be able to drop the A24 and the Nano up front. And what that does is that gives me down the line capabilities of plugging this in and updating the software. So um, I can change the way the dome light or the bubble light works and things like that. But I just, I'm afraid that I'm not going to have enough oomph with these little batteries. And here I got the batteries right here. I just got them today. I just used Amazon's just to see if everything will work and if it'll even drive the LED. Um, I'm going to have three LEDs working uh, one after the other after the other on the dome. So not one of them will be on at the same time as another one. So I shouldn't I shouldn't max it out with that because I'm not going to have more than one LED fired at a time. And this sure as hell should be able to drive that through the Arduino. Um, but what I'm afraid of doing is if the more LEDs I add, the more amp hours is going to go through the Arduino and the more heat it's going to generate. And I don't want to burn this out because I am going to use 12 volts instead of 5. Um, it's regulated up to 12 but I'm afraid that if I just push it too much, it's going to overheat and shut itself down and all that work will be for naught. And I'd rather have the dome light spin when I turn it on and off than anything else. So there we go with the headlights. I'm glad I didn't drill them out yet because <laughs> I'm not going to now. Um, but we'll have, well, at least we'll have the bubble light lit. I'm going to only use one bubble light in the center um, like the uh, Andy Griffith car had. Just the one single one on the top. And with the three LEDs going around in a circle, it'll look like the spinner uh, part for the light. So we'll be good to go there. Um, now just for a couple of little things. My rims, I touched up. And then I painted the flat aluminum on the hubs. Uh, and then on the, on the, yeah, what do you call the lug nuts? There we go. <laughs> um, just because I'm thinking, I know I'm going to use the uh, dog dishes on these, but I'm not sure if I'm going to have one missing. Uh, you know, like on Bullet, where you always see the one hubcap goes scooting off the side of the road. I'm not sure if I'm going to do that or not. So I wanted to have these available just to give me the option down the road without saying, okay, I'm going to take that off. Now I'm going to have to paint that. I'd rather do it right now. So, and I know it's going to be there. Uh, the other thing I did is, like I said, I didn't, I didn't drill these out yet. And it's a good thing I didn't because I don't think I'm going to. But what I did do, and I'm going to pull this up and hopefully it'll go in focus, is for the turn signals, I put one little dot of orange in the middle and I don't know if that'll show on camera or not but I'm telling you that almost makes these turn signals look like they're uh, glass with the light bulb in the back so I'm gonna let that sit for a minute and just kind of think if that's the way I want to leave it or not but right now and I'm looking at it I don't know if you can see it or not um, I don't know if it'll even focus in for you, but it is showing up in person and with the little, ref, you know, the ribs that are cut in it, it is really showing all the way across as orange like it would be, like you're looking at an angle and you're seeing it. So we're going to see what that does and, and how I feel about that tomorrow. I just painted the white for my backup lights. They're not dry yet or else I would do the panel liner dip right here and show you, but they're going to look perfect. I came back again on the back with the panel liner and did the, uh, the back stripe left the Fords showing. They look a lot better. I think in person than they will on the camera just because for some reason, my camera loves to brighten up Chrome. Um, the front bumper, I did the same thing too where I did a, another layer on top of the, the dark on the top and then that center line going across. I still have to do the red in here and the logo, but just haven't gotten there yet. 
But I think that pretty much covers everything. <laughs> like I said, I got a bunch done. The interior was a biggie. That that I'm really happy with. The, uh, the black and white, I knew that would work out, so I wasn't worried about it. The interior, I was just kind of nervous about the, the uh, using the tan. So let's throw this on here and I'll show you what it looks like now. And see that, I think is a whole, I can't even get that in that little hole, there it goes. I think that tan it looks a whole lot better than just a big old blob of black in there. Because I think that would have got lost. And all the details in there would have got lost too. So that's one decision I made on this that actually worked out right. <laughs> but there we go. I want to thank uh, Bruce again from Bruce's Eclectic World. He sent this out to me. Said that the, uh, the filling station needs a uh, police car. So, Bruce, again, thank you very much. Thank everybody else for following along. All the likes, the subscriptions, the comments, the keeping me straight. If I'm messing something up, I appreciate it. And with all that, I will let you go. Y'all have a great day and a better tomorrow. Thank you again for watching.